Hey guys, so you're going to have a few things to do today and I wanted to walk you through them because I could have been kind of confusing just by the directions that are on the assignments. So I wanted to go over with them a little bit for you. So the first thing you need to do is go through the setting mini lesson. Um, it is a video for you. Unfortunately, some of these slides, these are the slides that I go over in the video with you and explain certain things. But these videos with the links on them, since it's over a Disney movie, it was copyright. So um, I had to cut out the trailer where I had played it for you. So the video seems a little bit choppy, but you're still getting all of the instruction. So when I say we're going to watch this video to get a feel for the setting of the movie, and then it like chops into the next section of instruction, you need to pause the video and click on the link. The links will be posted on Google Classroom along with the slideshow. So I'll post the slideshow video, and then at the top, I will post those links. So I'll put down in New Orleans, and then the link, official trailer, and then the link. That way, you can pause the video, and you know that you're supposed to watch the down in New Orleans video. You can go to Google Classroom, click on the link, watch the video, and then start the video for the instruction again. Okay, so that's how that is going to work. It's going to go over how setting effects plot. All right, so how does where they are in the time period they are in affect what happens in the story? So that's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to watch that video, watch those clips, and understand the instruction and how setting effects plot. After that, you are going to complete this, the setting plot and character revelations, map stem, Google Doc. Okay, so setting plot and character revelations. This will be posted for you. So this is over the most dangerous game. Okay, I should put that up here probably. And you are going to go through here and cite text evidence about the setting plot and uh, revelations that we have about characters. So in this first table, you're going to cite five clues the author gives us about the setting of the story. So what does he tell us? We know that one would be that it's called uh, Ship Trap Island, right? Um, we know another one is called, he hears the gunshots. Do you guys remember that right at the beginning? So you could put gunshots and vegetation, right? So he hears the gunshots and we see all the vegetation. So it kind of shows us that there's probably some kind of hunting on the island. That's how that affected the plot. Okay, so don't use either of those two. There's plenty more in there, so I want five of those from you. Okay, how does the setting reveal General Zaroff's character? Give three examples. So for this part, you're specifically wanna, going to want to go back to the story where uh, Rainsford knocks on the door, Ivan answers, lets him in, and then he looks around General Zaroff's house, okay? It talks about a lot of different things that he sees in the house, and what does that show us about someone's character? So, like, for example, you walk in my room, and you see a bunch of pretty colors, right? There's yellow and orange and pink. It's very bright and summery, right? So that could say about my personality that I'm cheerful and happy. I'm a positive person, okay? So the setting of my classroom reveals that I'm cheerful or positive or bright, okay? So that would be an example of how the setting can reveal something about someone's personality or about their character. So you're going to do that for General Zaroff in The Most Dangerous Game. You need three of those. And remember, since we're citing things and giving examples, you're going to want to put quotations around it, okay? And for the last one, you're going to give five examples on how the setting of the story affects the plot of the story. So, how does where the setting is, so the island, right, how do the different spots on the island add to the plot of the story? You could specifically look at some of the traps that Rainsford placed, um, what happens at the end, how Rainsford gets away. You're going to look at the island as a whole, all the different parts of the island, and how that affects the plot of the story, okay? And then once you're done with that, you are also going to start on your most dangerous game map. Um, <clears throat> for this assignment, you don't need to complete all of this today, okay? There are some examples on there. It is a rather long assignment. So 
Today, the eighth graders who are here are going to have about 45 minutes to work on it. All right, so I need you guys to get about half of this done, and you will have another 45 minutes to complete it when you come to class on Thursday. So you need to get as much done today as you think you'll have time to complete it on Thursday because you won't have any more time after Thursday to complete it in class. It'll be on your own time. So if you put in more work today and you can finish it on Thursday, it's just one less thing that you have to do on Friday or over the weekend, okay? Or if you want to work on it some tomorrow, it doesn't matter when you work on it as long as it's done by Sunday, okay? All right, so here's the standard that we're focusing on. So we're going to analyze how literary devices are used to develop setting, reveal character, advance the plot, and contribute to meaning. Okay, and your objective is to create a map that illustrates the connection between the setting and the plot from the most dangerous game. So how the setting affects the plot. Okay, you are going to draw and label a map that includes the following. I would use this as a checklist. If your map does not have all these things on it, you are not going to get a good grade. This is a very easy assignment if you follow right down the list and follow the directions. It would be an easy A to help raise your grade. Okay, so I would take some time and get this done. You are going to have to go back to the story, the PDF that is on Google Classroom, multiple times. This is not a, I've read it through once, I'm going to throw something down for this map and I'm going to turn it in. Because that's going to be a terrible assignment and you're probably going to get an F. You are going to have to reference that story many, 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 many times. Okay? So, you are going to include the island itself, labeled as Ship Trap Island. Hint, there is a curve in the island. See examples. It should be included. So, if you look down at the examples, every single one of these has some kind of curve in it. Okay, do you see the curves? Those should be included. And they are all labeled Ship Trap Island. Okay. The island's vegetation, that means the plants, the trees, at least two different types that are mentioned in the story. So you're going to have to go back to the story and find the name of the two different types. That way you can label them on your map. You're not just drawing a tree. You need to label the tree of what kind it is that's mentioned in the story. The ocean surrounding the island should also be labeled. A small drawing that represents each of the six key plot elements of the story. So exposition. So, for example, you can show Rainsford falling off the yacht by drawing a yacht, showing a person in the water, or making splash marks. Just one of those. You don't have to do all three. Okay? You're going to do this on a regular size piece of printer paper. So, you're going to have to draw everything kind of small. Or if you have a bigger piece of, like, half poster board or full poster board, whatever you want to draw it on is fine. If you don't have poster board at home, that's okay. Just use regular printer paper. If you need to tape a couple pieces of printer paper together to make it bigger, that's okay. All right. Inciting incident. So that's your conflict. What started the whole story? Rising action. There's three events that lead up to the climax. So you need to draw each one of those around the island. They don't happen in one place. So all of these things are going to happen around the island. So they're happening in different settings of the island because you're going to connect all of them at the end. So don't just blob them all together on one spot on your map. They go in different spots all the way around the island. And in the story, it tells you where on the island those are. So on your map, I should be able to tell from the story where uh, the quicksand is, where the vegetation is, where the edge of the cliff is, okay? I should be able to see all of that on your map the same as it is explained in the story. You're not just making it up. You're getting it from the story. Climax is one event, so that's the turning point of the story. Falling action, there's two events, and then the resolution is obviously comes at the very, very end. And then three, you're going to draw a path that connects the six plot elements in order. You can use arrows pointing to the next event, dashes such as you'd see on a treasure map, footprints, whatever you would like to connect those, okay? So you can look at the examples, all right? You can double click on these and you should be able to blow them up. If you hit that open with Google Docs, it'll open for you. And you'll see on these that they have little footprints or little arrows that connect all of the different elements, okay? Most importantly, your map must be in color, all right? 
So if you don't have crayons or markers or whatever at home, you're more than welcome to get everything drawn out. And then when you come on to school on Thursday and you have those 45 minutes to work on it, you can use all the colored pencils and markers and stuff that I have here. All right. If you have any questions, please email me. Today is going to take you a little longer than normal, especially if you want to get a head start on this uh, most dangerous game map, which if it were me, I would get it done today and just have it to color on Thursday. It's just one less thing you have to worry about at the end of the week. Okay. As always, if you have any questions, please email me. I hope you guys have a great day, and I can't wait to see you on Thursday. Bye, guys.